Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calmlands. This may seem a little bit confusing to some of you because I will have been talking about the loan quite a while ago. I'm trying to build up a backlog of episodes because we're approaching the summer holidays in just over a month. So my children are going to be off school for quite a long period of time. Um, which means that I'm going to want plenty of leeway for being able to do things with them rather than being committed to constantly making videos right through their holidays. And I try to do this each year. So I'm getting quite a long way ahead, which is why I'm going to wait quite a long way to be able to, uh, quite a long time to be able to get your feedback on anything that I want feedback on. And the loan in particular is one that I do want feedback on. I, re I really want to see what everybody thinks of that. Most of the rest of it, I'm just kind of doing it how I want to do anyway. Um, I'm just kind of interested in your thoughts and opinions on it. A uh, lot of you really like this tractor. A lot of you said this tractor is really good and you like that I've got this slightly newer tractor here as well. Um, it's pointed out that the, the tractor itself is not that much different in power to the old one that we had in the last series. Um, the big difference is the type of gearbox that it uses. Because the type of ge gearbox is substantially different, it's able to change gear much more smoothly, and especially like going up the hill and everything. And that will just generally make life a little bit easier for us. It is a more powerful tractor. It is stronger than the one that we had last time. But it's not kind of the be-all and end-all superpower compared to the other one. A lot of it is down... And this is, I've been told, down with a lot of the new newer machines. Gearboxes work a whole lot differently. And that's a big part of why they are so much better than uh, the tractors that are 20 to 30 years old. Let's bring you there like that. Turn around again. Once we've done the bulk of the work up here, and we start getting there where the, the field starts getting a bit shorter, it's really going to shrink down fast. I was wondering about taking a break from this and going and doing a bit more wood cutting, but I don't think I will. We're going to work on... This field's hard. It's got some stones being turned up, but they're all yellow quality stones. I'm not sure if there's any particular reason for that. Maybe if we plough it again, we'll get a load of bigger stone turn up. I'm really hoping that we don't. I kind of like just having the small stone like this. I don't know if there's a setting on the map that you can have that has made it like this or what, but... I'm quite happy with it like this. I got no complaints with this at all. And I really love that the mini map does actually show um, in real time what's going on in the fields. So I brought this one up here now, and you can see on the mini map our updated field as we go along and do this plowing. So I'm just going to put you up there like that. Which is absolutely fantastic, I think. So you can clearly see when you're making fields like this, on a map like this, the update to your land as you go along. And it's not like doing it constantly. It seems to be every minute or so that it does an update from there. I just see like you've got little... There's a little step in it from where it updated and then we'll go up, we'll turn around and we'll start moving back down again and then it'll update the map again and give us a, a fresh look. The only thing it doesn't do is update where the trees are. The trees don't seem to show up on it for whatever reason. I don't know why that would be, but it is. You all the way up there. It's only a couple more passes now. This is exciting times, about as exciting as it gets when you're doing ploughing. I'm, I'm going to need to take a break from this in a minute, and we're going to need to do something different, because otherwise you're going to get very, very bored with this. Um, so, we've got our plans. We want to do pigs. 
I've got some more trees that I can cut down and get some money if I need to for like a stone collector although this doesn't need a stone collector what we could do with is a roller and that's a lot cheaper than a stone picker it, we don't need a stone picker for this field if that's the same with the other field that'd be brilliant we could just get a roller and that will roll in all of the stones and then we're not going to need to worry about them at all which would be fantastic stuff um lime spreader as well that's the only other one but I can't get either of these things until I can put them away under cover. Now, admittedly, a roller is the one item that I very, very rarely see put under cover, and that is almost always left outside. Um, that and some types of silage traders, depending on what they're made from. But most things are put under cover. Anything with moving parts is put under cover. I mean, it does. It really depends on the type of silage trailer. Uh, if the silage trailer is made up of largely aluminium panel, panels and or um, things like that, then yes, not necessarily aluminium, but or uh, steel that's been properly treated, weather treated. I'm just trying to think what would normally be left outside. What machinery in my part of the country is, my part of the world, is normally left outside. And I'm thinking roller, small cultivators that don't have any moving parts on them. That's about it, really. Everything goes undercover. Because otherwise it, it just rusts. That rust is the biggest issue that we have here everything like it rains all the time through the winter stuff doesn't get a chance to dry out it just rains and rains and rains and rains and you don't so you just don't store machinery outside it's just not something you do silage trailers are literally about the only thing i can think of that are stored outside on a lot of farms because there's not room in sheds for them um but everything else is is stored under cover so that it doesn't rust. So I'm I'm gonna I'm, I am gonna stick with that for this series. I need to have sheds. So if I want to be able to get any more machinery, if I want to be able to get the roller and the spreader for spreading the lime on the field, I've why are you going so slow? Um, I've got to get a shed to put the machines in. In order to be able to do that, we're going to have to cut down some trees. Yeah, we'll have to have a look at that. Right. Uh, uh, crop rotation. I was going to talk about crop rotation. We, I'm On the time-lapse series, I'm doing wheat, canola, corn, oats. Because I can squeeze in everything and I can do an oilseed radish planting in between each crop. And I've got time to do that. And then um, I do. I can plant the oilseed radish, and then I've got time to get the next crop in the ground. I play on two days per season in the time lapse series. I was actually thinking of playing one day per season on here. Think that there was any real need to switch it over to two days per season? I think I set it on two, but I can soon switch that back. So I, I might do that. I might use the uh, leave this one on one day per season. And I mean, the only downside to that is that if there's too much rain on the one day of the year that you want to do your harvesting, because when you're doing wheat, canola, corn, oats as your rotation, I mean, I would do something different than corn. But those going from wheat to canola, you have got a bit of a tight window. Corn is very late harvesting, so you want a spring planting after you've done corn, which is why I put oats in after that. And then wheat and canola are... I, I, I do the wheat first and then the canola, just because of when you harvest them and when you plant them. Um, oats you plant, you harvest fairly early, and that gives you time to get the wheat planted canola is the one that takes the longest in the ground 
Although I suppose that's something that I haven't looked at in here. Let's let's take a quick look a minute. Have they changed the planting dates and so on of anything? Doesn't look like it. So corn is over here. Oats, you can plant the oats in March. So if you get them planted in March, you're then able to harvest them in July, which then gives you plenty of time to plant the wheat and get the wheat in early. But you've got to plant your oilseed radish. Um, well, you can plant the oilseed radish on either of those days, and then it grows in the one month gets a green covering and then you cultivate that back in and you get the wheat in the ground so then you're harvesting the wheat at the beginning of July and then you once you've harvested that one you then immediately plant the oilseed radish so the oilseed radish comes up here um, but you can harvest the wheat in August if you're late for whatever reason. You can harvest, you can plant oilseed radish, and you've still got a window to be able to get your canola in the ground over here. And then the canola is harvested right there. Uh, if you're late planting, obviously it's going to be late uh, harvesting. And then the corn isn't planted until the following spring. But because corn is harvested so late you then have to have a spring crop following corn which is why we have oats now at the moment i can't include corn in that but i could put soybeans in instead because the soybean and corn are exactly the same planting window so i could use soybeans instead of that so we can go wheat canola soybean oat which i think is a pretty good rotation and Soybeans is, well, soybeans and canola are the same category when it comes to feeding the pigs. Wheat is its own category. Oats are a cash crop. They would be sold off, um, although they'll go up to the windmill first and be turned into flour and then they'll be sold. And the corn is obviously the main category for feeding pigs. So we've got... That would be a rotation that would allow us then to seriously think about getting our pigs installed and up and running. And then we'd be able to start making some money from them as well. It's just going to take a little bit of time to build things up to that. The main income earner before we reach the point where we can buy the pigs is going to be the crop itself. Unless I have got a silo, I can't store anything and keep it back ready for pigs anyway, which means that anything we harvest will need to go straight up to the windmill and be tipped there. Now, the slight problem we've got with that is that this big field here, to start with, we can, with the oilseed radish we can get one layer of fertilizer on the field so we'll have a fairly reasonable yield there's not a lot of space in our windmill 27,000 liters maximum incoming capacity and we've got a trailer so we haven't got a huge amount of space for storing anything and this field will produce a lot more than 27,000 liters so a silo is going to be fairly urgent. We're going to need to get a silo fairly quick if we're going to be able to... And once we've got a silo, we will be storing those crops back for the most part, ready for our pigs. I mean, I don't know how much we'll want to keep back. It's kind of... That's a little bit up in the air, really. I guess what we could do is we could fill the windmill up and then the rest goes into the silo maybe do that so a silo is probably going to be the next thing that we want to get other than the second like i want a second tractor and i want that one fairly early on but also i'm going to want a silo to store our grain like that windmill is not going to be able to take everything straight off the field so building a silo somewhere that's going to be over by the farm we can do some grass next to the farm. There's a little bit over there that we'll be able to do. And it's kind of like the next bit that I want to do. 
we've got we've only got a little short work here left on this plowing job now so i think we will stick with it and we will finish it apologies if you're finding this really insanely dull i don't know how long i've been I, i'm not actually sure how long i've been doing this i think this is going to end up being the majority of two episodes but we've only got the triangle bit left i was wondering about doing a little bit of um plowing on the bit next to the farm just over there so that we plant grass over there and it's a much better yield we, we get a much better yielding crop but i'm not sure about that maybe we'll leave that until we'll, we'll plow in the winter and we'll go and do a little bit of mowing over there in a bit because it's not going to be it's we can't mow as much as we could here but then there's a little bit more hay that we can make we'll do that as september hay some people do september hay it's not very common where i live hay you you know, if you, you're doing sort of august september that tends to be silage and that's what you feed the dry cows because uh, they don't need really good quality food they just need something to keep them going just keep them ticking over so you give them the third cut um silage not very often you would be making hay in september august yes there's plenty of people that do make hay in august june july august those tend to be a three months of making hay the time you get round to september the weather is cooling off quite rapidly by that point and it becomes increasingly difficult to actually dry the hay out fast enough um in between the rain because the rain is coming back at that point as well it gets much more difficult this is where it we start to speed up heading down the field but you've also got a lot more turning around whiz off across the field again um i got a few trees there's well there's four trees up by the windmill that we can go and cut down and then there's a few more trees around the farm we can go i'm not going to cut the deciduous trees i don't want to cut them down i want to leave them where they are didn't feel right cutting down all the deciduous trees it also is just going to spoil the appearance of the area a little bit now, i don't want to do that i'm not about doing that in this series i'm about making it look nice and i'm going to take the time to make it look nice so when now that we've got this as a, a marked out field the hired help is going to start doing some work in here and i would like the hired help to do as much as possible it's another thing with this series is i am actually going to have the hired help doing as much as possible because what that is representing at least to start with while we don't have any um anywhere for the hired help to live so we can only have one hired help working at a time but what that's representing is is us drawing it me, myself and senleia we're drawing a wage from the business you you still need to have money coming in and a lot of farmers will do it like that they will draw a wage from their business and so they pay themselves an hourly rate um or you know a, a weekly rate I, I know quite a few farmers that do that it's quite a normal thing to go and do so that's what we're going to do we're going to draw an hourly rate from our farm right here so that's represented by me being allowed to have one hired help working um the other hired help like you c i could technically say both me and sen are drawing a wage but i'm not going to do that we will only have one wage being drawn from the farm i think that's how we will work that one and that way it um it represents an income for our family and i i quite like that so i will try to do as much work as i can using hired help but that means that i've also got to make sure that the business is earning enough money to be able to afford that and this is where it gets increasingly difficult with the loan repayment situation that i'm currently staring down the barrel of but i'm gonna wait and see what everybody says so everybody may decide that they don't want me doing that they don't want me doing the um the loan that the five million euro loan i did stick to my guns i said that i would do it and i've done it and i had people saying you know that's really good but 
Um, perhaps it's not actually a good idea when we stop and think about it. Um, so I'm quite interested to find out what the updated situation is going to be with this. Whether I'm going to stick with this loan idea or not. And like I said before, those, you know, I am doing this series much how I want to, but there are a few things I'm going to bow to peer pressure on. Peer pressure being viewer pressure. And the, the loan structure and how we do that is one of them, because that was kind of like a big thing for the last series, was if I didn't finish my goals, I had to have this loan. So I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to go back on my promise unless... I'm certain it's what everybody wants, in which case we'll shuffle the goal slightly and we essentially, instead of having to pay off a loan and thus having to also pay a load of loan interest, um, we have to instead do it slightly differently and accumulate a pile of money instead. So the other side of the coin is if I'm paying loan interest payments all the time, then I'd be doing a lot of work myself in the fields so that I'm not spending the money. Whereas if I've got the loan, like if we get rid of the loan and I don't have that as an issue, then I would be instead using hired help whenever I can. Like I'm going to... A, try to do all jobs using hired help. I mean, I'll go around the outside edge of the field myself to just sort of mark out the edges, but then you put the hired help going, and that drain on the finances is our income. But also, it's kind of like compensating... Like, I've got rid of the loan, but I still have a, a, a regular expense that's going out that's costing us money, and thus increasing the challenge slightly. Almost done. I want to finish this bit up. There's no way I'm not walking... I'm not, I'm not going to walk away from this before it's finished. We're so close to getting this done now. A little bit more right there. And... I've then got a... Well... I don't need to... I was going to say, I, I then need to go and cultivate all of this, but I don't because the drill that we've got is an all-in-one drill that cultivates and um, plants at the same time. Like, it's... I think it does actually work as a direct drill. The only reason that I've got to plough the field that is... Uh, that we had the oats in is because it's been a while since that field had anything planted in it, and so... Um, oh, since the, the, the soil has been sort of broken up. So it does actually need it. Okay, so if I... I think just press Y. Yeah, limit to fields. Okay. We're done! Ladies and gentlemen. We have ploughed the field. It is quite impressive looking out across the field. Seeing everything that we've done. It does look quite good. But anyway... I need to carry on. So I'm in a new recording round, and I have had uh, like I've been doing a bit of research into pigs to sort of see if they're worth it, if we should be doing it, yada yada yada. Turns out that the balance for this game is in such a way that pigs on easy setting are you would. Do them only if you wanted to. Like, it's purely for uh, if you felt like doing pigs. If you're on normal settings, so medium settings, then... Because uh, uh, if you sell the crops individually on an easy setting, you make a lot more money than you do if you put them into pigs. If you sell the crops on normal settings, then provided you get the best price for your crops every time and the best average price that you could expect for crops for each different um, for each different crop, etc., etc., averaged over a couple of years, uh, you would 
make a little tiny bit more with the crops, but you would also have to have a little bit of luck with it as well. Um, you wouldn't necessarily sell your crops every single year in order to achieve the absolute best price. Um, so it's it really is kind of, they're both about the same. If you sell the crops off or if you put the food through pigs instead, uh, we've got to decide what we're going to plant over there. I was thinking wheat would be a good one, but actually that's something else that we need to look at. Um, and also, But then if you go onto hard mode, which is what we're on here, apparently it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, if you put the crops through the pigs and then sell the pigs, you make a lot more money out of the pigs than you do out of just selling crops by themselves. It seems to, pigs seem to really come in their own when you're coming to their own when you are playing on hard mode compared to playing on any other modes. And this is quite interesting to me. I've, I think this is something that's quite interesting to find out because... You know, we, we're kind of like wondering what animal we should do. Well, it seems that pigs is the obvious choice. And I've kind of already decided to do that anyway. But there's a specific way that you need to do pigs in order to get them to profit. What you don't want to do is keep a load of adult pigs for absolutely ages and then just sell a few off here and there. What you do is you, you, you basically you set it up and you do it in a very... Um, specific way and then that will maximize your profit and it will do really well but i'm not gonna actually i'll tell you about that in a minute um what have we got at the moment we've got 5600 oats oats can't be used for pigs so we wouldn't be doing that I had several people saying that we need to get rid of some of the trees around here because it's better for the windmill if we do that um so we'd at least want to get rid of that tree there I mean, we can't cut that one down because we don't own it, but um, we can cut that tree down there. And I'll probably end up cutting that one down as well, so just clear it back a bit. But we've got one pallet of flour right here, which is a thousand litres of flour. So we'll be able to go and sell that. We're not going to worry about that just at the moment. So we've got our field. Now... When it comes to crops that we want to grow, in order to be able to feed pigs, we need corn. We have to grow corn. So we're going to have to include corn in our rotation. We also want to grow canola or soybeans. Now, canola is the one that actually gives the highest yield. So we would get the most from that one. But overall, the most profit you get is from soybeans. So if we're growing more than the pigs would be consuming, it's actually better to grow soybeans than it is to grow canola purely on a profit point of view. Um, our uh, windmill that we've got, if we just go and take a look at that one, that one does actually mill out. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.